I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to make this awesome animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. It really just takes a few minutes, it's simple, and there is lots to learn. Also be on the lookout for some potential DaVinci Resolve updates. A lot of people have been speculating um, what Resolve is up to. It's been a while since they put out a, a release and they're doing an announcement a little bit later today. So we may get some really interesting DaVinci Resolve news. I'm going to keep my eyes open and I'll definitely be talking about it. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fun things to try out. Let's see what we can do in about five minutes. If you hadn't guessed already, this animation is fake 3D. We're going to set up the basic animation and then you're going to see the power of easing curves and how big a difference they can make with your animations. We can also apply a few different effects to create some interesting looks. Here's the animation with my Just Color Trails effect added. Or we can use my border effect, put a shadow in there, create a really interesting look. Okay, we're not going to be on the clock for this one, but we're going to see how quickly we can get it set up. It just takes a few steps. The first thing we're going to do is just create a circle and get that bouncing up and down. We're going to add a background node into the node area, take the output of the background and connect up to the media out. There we've got a nice black background where we can create our animation. We're going to use the shape nodes for this one, so click in the node area, hit control space, and search for S ellipse. With S ellipse selected, hit control space and search for S render. And put that in the viewer, and that's going to be our circle. So we really need it to be a little bit smaller, so let's click on the ellipse, right click on height, and choose expression. Click the plus and drag it over to the width. That's going to tie those two together, so when we adjust the width, the height will adjust as well. I'm going to scale it down to about that size right there. And we're going to take the output of the render and merge it on top of the background. Click media out and hit two. That's what we have. Let's make that dot a little bit smaller. Now that we have the circle created, let's animate it. So with the render selected, let's click the transform node and go to the first frame. And in the inspector, we're going to keyframe the center property and set the position to 0.7. That's going to move the dot up. Let's go over to about frame 30. We just clicked on it right there in the frame bar and we're going to set the uh, position to 0.3. All right, that's the, the starting of the animation. We're just going to get that bouncing up and down in a second. So let's go to frame 15. We're going to keyframe the size at 1. Go to frame 45, and let's keyframe the size. We're going to set the, let's set the size to 0.3. So the, the dot is going to get smaller as the animation goes. With the transform selected, hit the brightness contrast node. We're going to use this to dim the circle. Let's go to frame 15. And we're going to keyframe the gain, and we're going to make sure this little alpha box is checked right here. So that's going to allow us to adjust the alpha of the circle. And on frame 15, we're going to set the gain to 1. And we're going to go to frame 45. And let's set the gain to 0.3. So here's what we have so far. The circle goes down, and it just kind of gets dim and smaller. Doesn't look like much. This is where the curves are going to come in. So let's go to the spline editor, and we're going to select the brightness contrast and the transform. And make sure that you hit these three dots and it says show selected tools, show all. Check the transform and check the brightness contrast. And then hit this um, little box here to show all the keyframes. I'm going to highlight all these keyframes and we're going to click the ping pong option. And it's just going to have this animation repeat back and forth. And let's take a look what we have. Let's remove these controls here. Hit I hit control K to remove the controls real quickly and we got a repeating animation now. It looks okay. Now let's add some easing in there. So let's select all the frames again. And all we're going to do is click this option right here to smooth out the curves. And you'll see we got some smoothing going on. Now let's take a look at the animation. It makes a big difference. It looks a whole lot better. So all we're going to need to do is just take this and repeat it. So we're going to add another transform node outside the brightness contrast and slide our dot over a little bit. So we're going to make room because we're going to duplicate these over to the right. So with Transform 2 selected, hit Control Space and search for Duplicate. So let's do about 12 copies. Once the copies are set, you can take the Center X position and just slide it over. And we got 12 balls that kind of bounce up and down. Okay, next up we're just going to offset the time. So we're going to just set it at, uh, let's try 6 frames and see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty interesting. We have one set of, one row of balls that are kind of spinning around. All we're going to do is duplicate that to kind of create the swirling effect. Click in the node area, hit control space, and search for duplicate. We're going to do one more. We're going to take the output of this duplicate, which is this row of balls here, put them into the second duplicate, and merge that right on top. And we're just going to, we're going to create two copies, and we're going to do the time offset at 30. All right, that's looking pretty good. We can do a few more things to make this interesting. I'm going to take this bright, the background, and we're going to take the alpha all the way down on that because we're going to apply some effects to this. Let's take another background, put it in the bottom here, and merge this right on top. 
We're going to add some color and a transform, and then the effect will be pretty much done. So outside of this merge, um, we're going to add a background node. We're going to take the output of the merge and put it into the background, and then we'll take the background and put it back into the merge. And what this is going to let us do is adjust the color. So you can see we have some red there. We can um, really make it whatever color we want, but uh, I kind of like the gradient, so I'm going to set that up. Let's move these a little closer together. So I'm going to take this duplicate node and slide these a little bit closer. Oh, let's create a few more copies. Let's put it at uh, 17 copies. Let's see if that get, where that gets us. And the, with the duplicate nodes, they do run a little bit slower, so um, sometimes you need to just kind of be patient with it. All right, so let's, uh, I'm going to set up the gradient for the background. So let's, let's click the background. In the inspector, we're going to change the type to gradient. And I'm just going to click on these little arrows. Um, you just click on the gradient to set up a color. And we're going to set this up. We're just going to go left to right here. So I'm going to start with red and just finish, do all the rest. All right, we got our gradient set up. Now we're going to take it and kind of spin it and rotate it around. Um, we're going to take this thing and just add a transform node. So with the background two selected, we're going to add a transform node. Click on transform. And let's go to the first frame. We're going to keyframe the angle. We'll go over, uh, let's say, uh, say 40 frames or so and adjust the angle here. Go back to the spline editor, select angle, and we're gonna highlight both of these points and we're just gonna click the set relative and that's just gonna keep the, uh, and that's just gonna keep it spinning. All right, that looks great. And this is where you can apply all kinds of different effects to create some really neat looks. Um, we're just gonna try the rays. So let's click on merge three, hit control space and search for rays. And we're going to bring the threshold up. That looks great. And you can adjust all of these settings to do whatever you want. But there's a lot of things I tried with this that looked really interesting. Um, let me just show you real quick, like adding, like I say, like a directional blur. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's outside of this transform, hit control space and search for directional blur and add that in. And we're going to take it and we're just going to crank up the blur direction and the angle. And let's make the length a little bit longer. Um, you can type it in here, say 0.2. Bring this down just a bit. And let's bring down the rays. There you have it. There's some fake 3D. When things get bigger, they're closer to the camera. And when they get smaller, it looks like they're a little bit further away. Um, so that's kind of what this does. And also when it gets further away, you kind of dim it out a little bit. That kind of enhances the effect. Like, subscribe, comment below, and let me know what you think. Always love hearing from you. And maybe we'll have some interesting DaVinci Resolve news a little bit later today. Um, we're going to see. They're, they're always up to something. Um, maybe it'll be good. I'll talk to you soon.